Thank you, Pastor Luke, Pastor Jeff. Good morning. It's good to be here this morning. Are you excited and thankful that we can be in a house to worship the Lord together? Yes. Amen. It is good to be here standing in front of you. Um, and I'm thankful for a church that is gracious and kind and, and prayerful. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I had surgeries in February and March to remove some melanoma on, on the back of my head, and uh, I am, am doing well. My recovery is going well. Uh, the doctors are confident and feel confident that they caught it early enough that it hadn't spread internally, so praise God for that. I'm so thankful for that and believing that it's going to continue to be that way. So I just want to say thank you for all the prayers, the calls, the text messages, uh, the meals, Everything that your thoughtfulness was was amazing to me and to my family. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, today we are closing out our series in the Holy Spirit. In the last five Sundays, we've been looking at the Holy Spirit, and uh, especially in the last few weeks at the gifts of the Spirit. So if you have your Bibles, hopefully you do, turn to the book of First Corinthians in chapter twelve. Yes. We get excited about God's word, it's our life, it's our source, and, and so when we turn there, that's why we get excited. But we've been looking at the gifts of the Spirit, and so I encourage you to look, go back and listen to the previous sermons and messages over the last few weeks on the, the, the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit was given to be our counselor, to be our helper, and there are gifts that God has given us through the Holy Spirit for our good and for the good of our church and the church as a whole. And so that's what these gifts are about. So follow along with me in your Bible or up on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 7. He says this, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that is so powerful, so enriching, so life-giving. We thank you for it. And we pray that as, as we spend this time together digging into your word, that you would um, challenge our hearts to seek after you and to seek after the one who gives us these gifts, that we would operate in these gifts to further your kingdom. And it's in your mighty and powerful name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So these gifts, real quick before we dig into them, these gifts, the Bible says to eagerly desire these gifts. In other words, make this something that we want to be a part of. We need to be open to the Holy Spirit in order to help other people. These gifts are meant to edify, meaning they're meant to encourage, to build up, to, to help to challenge us as an individual, as a church, as the body of Christ. They are meant to reveal God's grace. That's what these gifts are for, to reveal God's grace. And ultimately, we want people to be pointed to Jesus Christ, don't we? That's what these gifts are for. They come from God. He gives them as he wills and sees fit. He owns them and he gives them. So I encourage you to seek after him. He's the one who has them. We're going to spend time in just a little bit of, of prayer and worship and seeking after him. And I encourage you, man, he's the one that provides all that we need, isn't he? He gives us, he understands what we need. And in situations, he's the one who bestows these gifts to help us, to encourage us, to build up, to, to, to seek after him is what we're doing. And finally this, it'll be up on your screen. These gifts are not given so people can see how well we know God. They need to show people how well God knows them and loves them, right? It's not meant to, say, to show off to say, wow, he really knows God. He really spends time close to God. No, no, no. They're meant to point people to him so that they can see that God loves them and knows them. Amen? Amen. So we're going to end, like I said, in, in just a little bit in time of prayer. Um, of seeking after God, I'm, I'm going to call us forward to pray for a few things. One, if, if Jesus is, is 
needing to be Lord and Savior of her life, and he isn't. We're going to take time to pray. We're going to take time to pray for uh, seeking after the Lord. If you need heal and you need just pray for anything, man, this is going to be the opportunity that we have. And I uh, give, give you permission. Don't feel like you have to wait back. If you want to come forward to pray for someone else, you feel like you need to, please do. You know, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about going to pray. So today, we're going to look at the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and discerning of spirits. So these three work together really well. Um, They're often referred to as the discerning gifts. So that's the title of, of the message today, discerning gifts. And I believe that we all have wisdom, knowledge, and discernment from life experiences, right? We all have a level of that just from living life. We can, we can talk through a lot of the situations and just say, I have a level of wisdom and knowledge and just discernment. Um, and that's in the natural realm. But what the Bible talks about and what I'm gonna share today is something that would, we would look at as supernatural, all right? Something that in your own strength, in your own wisdom and understanding about life, you would not be able to know or manufacture on your own. It, this is, this is a, a level of being supernatural to the point where only God can speak that. Only God can help in those situations. And so that's, that's what, we, what we're going to be sharing today. So this is when it becomes supernatural because only God operates this way. So I want to quickly teach about these three gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Share a few stories from life and from the Bible. And then we're going to take time to pray. So let's first of all look at wisdom. Wisdom, excuse me. Wisdom. Have you ever sat down with someone who's older than you? And they give you like a piece of advice from something that they experienced in life. Raise your hand if you've had that. How many of you have shared life experience and wisdom with somebody? Okay. Uh, parents, if, it, it's probably a, a, a duty of ours that when our kids are little, we would look at them and say, now, when you see yellow snow, <laughs> right, don't eat, don't eat it, don't touch that, right? It feels like we, that's just a piece of advice we need to, to pass along. Or in the movie Elf, when Buddy is getting ready to go to New York City and he gets a piece of advice that says, Buddy, if you see gum on the street, leave it there. It's not free candy, right? There's wisdom that comes from life experiences. And so when a grandparent or a parent will share, like, hey, I went through this tragic situation and here's some wisdom that I've gained from it. That's wisdom, but that's not the kind of wisdom that the Bible is, is talking about here in this instance. The gift of wisdom is when the Holy Spirit gives a divine answer or a solution to a problem or a challenge that you are facing. That's the gift of wisdom. Envision this, and this is one way that I see it, is this, is that when, when we're seeking after God and we need wisdom in a situation, we're asking for this gift of wisdom, um, imagine God being at, the, at his throne and there's this pipeline that goes directly from the throne of God to your spirit, to your heart, and it's exactly what you need to know and what you need to do in that situation. That's one way I see the gift of wisdom, that God speaks directly into that situation, something that, that you would have never thought of before or didn't think of up to that point, and God speaks directly to you. So in the Old Testament, we see Solomon. He receives uh, what I would understand as a gift of wisdom in a situation. In 1 Kings chapter 3, there's two women who had babies about the same time. Uh, one of the, the, the women accidentally killed her baby. And so what she did is she swapped her dead baby with the other woman's alive baby while she was sleeping. How many of you have read this before? You've read this story. There, so there's this dispute going on between the two moms of whose baby is alive and whose baby has died. And so King Solomon steps in and in uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, says, he says, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king, and he gave an order, cut the living child in two, and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose was, son was alive was deeply moved, and out of love for her son, she said to the king, please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Then the king gave his ruling, give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is the mother. Wow. Only God could have given wisdom in that moment, right? How many of you think, well, you don't have to make decisions like King Solomon, right? Wow. Only God could have helped in that moment. 
Jesus gave us an example in John chapter 8 where they confront him with a woman who's been caught in adultery. And they want him to give a, a, a judgment, a ruling. What does he say about this situation? And um, we, you, you, a lot of us have read the story, but you understand where it's going. Jesus turns the whole situation on its head. And he says, actually, whoever is it without sin, you can go ahead and, and throw the first stone at her. Wisdom in that situation. Wisdom is also seen operating in the church in Acts chapter 15, where the church is debating whether they include non-Jews into the body. And James, the leader of the assembly, he speaks this word of wisdom. A personal story of mine a few years ago, one of my kids had a class in school that was not as easy as other classes, right? We all have, there was all all of us in, in school, we had a class that we really were good at and some that we struggled in, right? And this was one of those moments. And we had prayed, uh, my wife and I and, and our family were praying, asking for wisdom, what do we do? Um, we had tried so much. And I went to lunch with a friend one, one day and it was just sharing the situation because it was like, it, it's hard as a parent to see your kid struggle, right? And, and go through a hard time. And so I shared and we just, we said, man, we need to ask God for his wisdom, you know? And I think we prayed just really quickly. It wasn't much. I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say that by the afternoon of that very day, I felt so strongly in my spirit, God say, email the counselor, explain the situation and ask what can be done. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why have I not thought of this before, right? Uh, so I did. And by the end of the day, the counselor got back to me and explained some of the things that could be done, some of the changes that could be made. And, and they wrote in this email that said, today was the final day to be able to make those changes. And I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit helped in a moment like that, right? Because what in my mind seems so simple after the fact, but me going to God and asking for his wisdom, give me the gift of wisdom in this moment, and he was able to help. It seems so simple, but it was supernatural wisdom to know what to do. Raise your hand if you've had a moment where you know God gave you a supernatural wisdom in a moment, in a situation. Lots of us. We need this. Listen, I believe as we open our hearts up to God, we seek after God, he will help us in situations. He will give us the gift of wisdom to help us. The next one is knowledge. Knowledge and wisdom tend to go uh, hand in hand in a lot of situations. But this knowledge isn't going to someone to predict your future. You know, tell me who I should marry, anything like that. It's not going to palm readers or tarot cards, that kind of stuff. This is not even knowledge that you get from books and from the highest education, all right? The book knowledge and getting education, that's important. But this isn't the type of knowledge that, I, that the Bible is sharing with today. A word of knowledge is the Holy Spirit allowing you to know something specific that you didn't learn by natural means, it's a supernatural transfer of information, a supernatural transfer of information. The Fire Bible that so many of you have uh, been able to get, there's a note in there that says, the Holy Spirit reveals knowledge about people, circumstances, or biblical truth that likely would not have been known or understood apart from God. This is the knowledge that the Bible is talking about, a word of knowledge. In the Old Testament, in 2 Samuel, King David we read about him who, um, he saw Bathsheba. He lusted after her. He called her in. They sleep together. She becomes pregnant. It's not his wife. And this all happens while her husband, Uriah, is off to battle, off to war. And so after a few times of trying to cover up, King David, um, you know, resorts to doing something so drastic. And he calls for Uriah to go to the front line of battle where the fighting is fiercest. And he ends up dying. So King David thinks this is all covered up, smooth sailing, until God spoke a word of knowledge to the prophet Nathaniel. Nathaniel goes and confronts David and, and confronts him about what has happened. But, uh, but we, what we tend to see as a negative side of thing, I want you to see the positive side of this. There was a redemption that was taking place also. God still believed in King David and God still wanted to use King David. And so God used this word of knowledge as an open door for redemption. There was a time when uh, we were beginning to add on to the, the building 
the north side over here. And uh, we're starting to pray through and put plans together and kind of dream about what could be happening. And, and things were starting to move forward. Um, Pastor Weaver said that he felt strongly at one point God clearly say to move forward and, and do this. And he said he sensed God say to him a word of knowledge that you will know this is God when it's all said and done and you see the interest rates. Now, I'm probably butchering this story a little bit, but, you know, to sum it up, you will know this is God when this is all done and you'll see the interest rates. And so we began to lock in the rates with the bank. We began to lock in the, the building cost and the contracts with everybody. And we moved forward and we were able to build a beautiful, beautiful addition to this church. When it's all said and done, Pastor Weaver then went and he looked at the interest rates and what they would have been had we waited. And through God's help and this word of knowledge, we were able to save the church $6 million because of the interest rates, what they would have been in the cost of everything. Praise God. So we're so thankful for a word of knowledge. Dave Grimm tells a story, he told me a story of when he was at his church in Pennsylvania um, they had a mom who was a teacher at their Christian school who had come out of the witchcraft lifestyle and scene, all right? She was a teacher there. When she had come out of witchcraft and, and decided to follow Jesus, the head witch decided to cast curses on her and her family. Now, this is something that not a lot of us probably have um, dealt with before, but when this, when this mom did this, these curses were given to her family and, her, um, and herself. So for years, this mom's daughter dealt with really strange illnesses. And Dave said one example was at one point, her stomach was not working, so they removed her entire stomach. Weird things that were taking place. So one week, they have a guest speaker from India who is there and Dave and this pastor go to this guest speaker and say hey tonight at the service there's a, a girl that's going to be coming who needs healing and Dave said instantly the speaker says she will not be healed until this her mom uh, denounces witchcraft and and follows Jesus again he had no history of knowing uh, what had taken place. They didn't share any of that information, but the, word gave, the, the Lord gave him a word of knowledge and was able to say, this won't happen until this takes place. See, what Dave and the pastor didn't realize is this mom had gone back into it. And Dave said, unfortunately, uh, the mom never did. She never did come forward uh, to receive Jesus, and the girl wasn't healed, and their family was uh, falling apart because of it. A word of knowledge. There's a, a story that I heard just this last couple of weeks from a pastor in Dallas, Texas, Texas named Robert Morris. And I decided rather than retell the story, I want you to hear it from him. So this is an excerpt from one of his sermons on a word of knowledge. Um, Debbie and I were sitting in a, a restaurant one time. This couple walked in and he was just huge, a muscle, a bodybuilder, obviously, huge. And as soon as he walked in, I knew something, just like that. And she even said, you, you got a word, don't you? I said, yeah, I do. So we prayed, Lord, let him receive it. And I remember saying, Lord, give me a, a way to start the conversation, you know? Because you don't want to just walk over and say, thus saith the Lord, you know, or something. <laughs> so... So I walked over and I said, hey, I'm, I, I don't want to uh, bother y'all or, you know, disturb you or something. I said, I just, I, just, I just have a question for you. And he said, okay. I said, have you ever worked out? <laughs> and of course, he laughed and he said, hey, so you know what I do now? Because I talk to a lot of sometimes guys that, are, that really have these huge, you know, bodies. And, I, uh, and I'll just, because I just like to start conversations and see where they go. But I... I'll say to him, now I've got a great opening line. I say, you know, if you followed my workout routine, you could have a body like this. <laughs> so anyway, I said to him, I said, um, well, and they laughed, kind of broke the ice. I said, I don't want to bother you. I said, but when you walked in, I know this sounds strange, 
But I feel like the Lord spoke something to me that I'm supposed to share with you. And they looked at each other like a Mack truck had hit them. They just were like, I can't believe this. And he reached over and took his wife's hand. And I said, do you mind if I share it with you? He said, would you please sit down and share it with us? Because we're talking about some things about this right now. And so I sat down and I said to him, I saw a vision when you walked in today. I said, I saw a vision of a little boy who was sitting in his grandmother's lap. And he put his head down like that when I said that. And I said, and his grandmother had a Bible in her lap. And she told the boy about Samson. And she said, if you'll give your life to God, he'll make you as strong as Samson. Do you know what I found out later? He was a former Mr. Universe. I said, she told you if you'll give your life to God, he'd make you strong as Samson. And you gave your life to God right there sitting in your grandmother's lap. He looked back up at me and I said, but the Lord told me to tell you that he's kept up his end of the deal, but you haven't kept up your end of the deal. Now, you better know you hear God when you tell Mr. Universe that. <laughs> but he put his two fingers in his thumb like that. He started weeping at the table. His wife started crying. And he said to me, I was raised by my mom. She was a single mom. So my grandmother kept me a lot growing up. And he said, one day I was walking home and these boys threw rocks at me and one hit me in the head and started bleeding. He said, when I got home, my grandmother took care of me and he said she got her Bible and she read the story of Samson to me. She told me if I'd live for God, he'd make me as strong as Samson. And I made a commitment that day to do it. And he said, I told my wife that story for the first time on the way to the restaurant today. And I led both of them back to the Lord right there at that table. Amen. That's why the gifts are given. It's to point people back to Jesus. Amen. I feel strongly to encourage, especially parents and grandparents, but we all have Hopefully we have people that we know that are away from the Lord that we're praying for. And I, I, I say this to encourage you that you may not be the one that has the opportunity to, to have a moment like that with your loved one or your family member or your neighbor. But let's pray and ask God that spirit-filled believers be, would be led by the Spirit to have a moment like that with the one that you're praying for. Amen. God sees them. God sees them and he wants to reach them. And so trust him that it may not be you that gets that opportunity, but God is working behind the scenes to reach them. <clears throat> the final one is discerning of spirits. This gift is meant to help determine what person and message is or isn't from God. There's a study note in the Fire Bible that says, during the end times when false teachers and the distortion of biblical Christianity will greatly increase, this gift will be extremely important for the church and how true it is. We need the discerning of spirits here. This isn't discernment or the gift of discernment. We all have like a level of that where we can kind of judge right and wrong to some extent, but the supernatural side of it is that there's a, a level of discernment that we need that only comes from God. This is needed for believers and for the church. This is a gift so that we can understand what is true, what is right versus what is ungodly what is evil and what is not true when we when we hear teachings and, and preaching we need to be able to decipher god is this for, truly truly from you satan appears as an angel of light the bible tells us and he deceives with false teaching and lies second timothy chapter 4 says for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine 
Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. I remember reading that when I was younger, thinking someday that's going to happen. And I, I think we're there. The Apostle Paul warns the pastors at Ephesus, at, um, Ephesus excuse me, to distinguish between those who come as wolves in sheep's clothing and those who bear a true message from God. Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16 says, Once they were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Seemed to be true. She kept this up for many days, and finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. Just because her words were true didn't, didn't mean that the source was godly. Um, I asked Pastor Austin and his wife Elizabeth if I could share this story. There was a time, and Austin has shared this before uh, with the church, but there was a time when his wife Elizabeth was younger. Um, her mom and dad didn't feel comfortable about set, letting her and her sisters spend the night at someone, uh, someone else's house, uh, someone from their church. And they didn't know why. They just had this kind of check in their spirits. And they didn't know anything to be wrong, but just had one of those check in their spirits. No physical evidence to go off of, nothing like that, but they yielded to the spirit and the prompting, and only to find out years later that the dad ended up in prison on multiple counts of molestation. Listen, we may not encounter a moment like Paul and Silas, where we have, are calling out a spirit out of somebody. We may not have a moment like that, but how many of you have ever had a check in your spirit? Like, this does not seem right. This is, this is probably not godly. I don't know why. As a parent, sometimes we say, I just, just trust me. I don't know why, but I'm going to say no in this moment. We don't understand, but I'm thankful that God has given us the gift of the discerning of spirits. What is evil versus what is godly? What is true versus what is untrue? And we, more than ever before in our day and age, need this gift to operate in our hearts and in the church, don't we? We need this. I want to share uh, something, a perspective with all of us before we close, especially this is for parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, teachers, those who have uh, people under us that we maybe mentor or disciple that we have influence on. I've heard it talked about before, and I've even said this, is that we have a concern for our uh, younger generation growing up in our culture today. Right? How many of you have thought that before? We're just concerned. It's not like it was when I was growing up. We say that. Uh, the, the peer pressure that is there, the sexual perversion that is there, the lying, the hatred, all of that that goes, goes along, the identity crisis that's go, taking place with, with, with kids. We, we say, man, I, I'm just concerned. And, and we've said that before. You get the picture. And I agree as a parent, I want to help and protect my kids, my nieces, my nephews as much as possible. But listen, I cannot leave out the power of God and his Holy Spirit that empowers each and every one of us. We cannot disregard that. The Holy Spirit helps us navigate every challenge this world offers. The Holy Spirit will give wisdom and knowledge to our kids and our the younger generation just as much as he does you and I doesn't he he will give that why doubt that the Holy Spirit will leave them hanging in a moment the Holy Spirit will give the gift of discerning of spirits to our kids just like he does for us he's going to help them recognize a the spirit of evil versus a spirit of God, when they're facing a difficult situation, a difficult conversation, a subject matter that is contrary to the word of God, I believe and I'm praying that the Holy Spirit would empower these gifts to our kids.
Amen. To our, to our nieces and our nephews so they can boldly proclaim the truth of God. The Barna Group, they did a research study and they found that 30% of people 64 and older, if you're 64 or older, raise your hand. All right. Sorry to call you out. But they did a study and they found that 30% of the age group, 64 and older, believe that the, the gifts of the Spirit and healing are for today. They asked the same question to an age group of 18 to 25. 56% believe that the gifts are for today and, and healing is for today. Our young people are seeking after and believe in these gifts even more than grandparents do. Let's don't diminish the power of the Holy Spirit just because of the age of a person. But I also want to say this, it's great that God used you back in 2000, but what about today? What about this week? What is God doing through you to help other people, to encourage other people, to build up, to challenge, to love people? What is God doing in your life today? Don't minimize the impact of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit, this should be a normal way of living for us. This should be something that we operate in on a consistent basis as we live in proximity close to Jesus Christ. Worship team, would you come? Real quick before we pray. If you find yourself, it'll be, these will be up on your screen. If you find yourself lacking and keeping in step with the Spirit, I wanna give you a couple practical things that can kind of re, recalibrate, recenter us in our focus and, and, and drawing close to the Lord. Number one is this, make Jesus Lord and Savior. If you have not done that, today is the day. If Jesus Christ is not your Lord and he's your Savior, please, in a moment, we're gonna pray. Would you come find me, come find one of the pastors as we respond. Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Number two, draw near to God. The Bible says in James chapter four, draw near to him and what happens, he draws near to you. I firmly believe that that happens and I know it does. This happens by praying, reading God's word, fasting, and being faithful to the church. And let me just say this, parents, you set the pace for this. You model this for your kids. The more time that we spend with God in those areas, the more time that that happens, the more open we will become to be used by the Holy Spirit, to be used in, in the gifts of the Spirit. Number three, be more like Christ and less like the world. In other words, be holy. I'm not saying perfection, but I'm saying be holy. We have to live holy. That is where our heart and our spirit is going in the direction of God Almighty. We're living, we're pointing towards Him and we're looking to Him for the example, not to society, not to this world. And finally this, be available and be obedient. Ask for these gifts. Pastor Luke challenged us last week when he talked about the gift of faith. And one, one point he said, when was the last time we asked for the gift of faith? And I wanna continue that today. When was the last time you asked for the gift of wisdom or knowledge or the discerning of spirits? When was the last time? But then be obedient, just like Pastor Robert was obedient in that moment, be obedient. The Bible says, since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. So as the spirit leads you, be obedient. Would you stand with me today? We're gonna pray. And here's how we're gonna respond. As we sing, I want us to seek after the one who gives us these gifts. Seek after, put yourself in, in proximity in your heart and in your spirit to be able to draw near to God today. If you're making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I'm asking you to respond. If you are needing wisdom on, on a particular matter, I'm asking you to respond. If you are wanting to draw near to God and just seek after Him, I'm asking you to respond. If you need prayer for anything, I'm asking you to respond. And as you do, others are gonna come around and pray. But Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to be together. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for these gifts, all of them. We pray and we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. God, fill us with your presence. Fill us with your Spirit. Help us to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Help us to boldly proclaim your truth. 
God, we need you. God, we need you. God, we need you. God, have your way in this place. As we spend time here at the altar, would you speak to hearts and lives? In Jesus' mighty name, would you respond today?